Hello and welcome again to another video from the Micro Rooster. Today's topic is users and user groups. A lot of uh, subscribers have requested some video to show how to create users and user groups. Although this might be a simple uh, activity, it is good to go through the basics just to show users and user group creation in MicroStrategy. You need to have a architect or a, actually an admin right uh, privileges because you need to see the administration. Uh, if you expand the administration uh, folder, you will see something called user manager in which you see the groups, the MicroStrategy groups that you've created or that were created for you and you see the everyone. The first step is to go into everyone and create a new user. So I'm going to right click here and create a new user. Here you'll get the wizard. So you give the user a name. All right, and you can say something about it. You need to give it a password. Just give it one, two, three, one, two, three. You can say the user can or cannot change their passwords depending on your security requirements, or you might force the user to change their password at the first login. You also can have the password never expiring, or you can have a limited expiration or you can have it expire at a certain frequency like every 90 or 120 days, depending on your security needs. Also, if you have an account created, this is where you click to disable an account and enable it without deleting it, okay? So that's the first step. Second step is to check on the project access. Once you give a user an account, you wanna say, okay, what privileges do you, this, this, is this user just a web user? If so, I would click these. Is this guy going to use Microsoft Office? Is he going to use a mobile? Is this user a developer or just an analyst? Depends on your needs. Or an architect, etc. And or an administrator. Okay. So under each one of these, you will see a list of specialized activities because you could either enable all or you can say after I enable all. For instance, use the VLDP property editor, for, for example. Now, if you notice here, it says inherited access. This is typical inherited access, but sometimes you want to merge a user's access with another user group. And this, so what happens is he inherits access from your selections into Mixture Tutorial with whatever these options are, plus some other user group privileges. Typically, you don't do this because there's better ways to do it, but sometimes for some users, you just want to go ahead and quickly integrate their uh, access with another group's access without actually adding them to the group. So this is bypassing the need to add a user to a user group, for example, called manager by giving it the same privileges that the manager is. So it's a shortcut path. It really will confuse you if you do that, unless you know what you're doing. So I would recommend keeping it inherited unless you have a specific user role for that user that doesn't need to be included in a group. Go to the security filter. You will notice that if you have multiple projects, this is where the drop down you can select one or many. Uh, you will notice them here stacked one column after another. So you can give them certain access to one group, but not for another group, for instance. So you have that privilege to control. Here you select the security filters that you need. Let me show you here if I want to launch this. And you can add a security filter. So this user, for example, is from the South region, if I was doing some uh, special reporting, and I don't want that user to uh, run any other uh, region. What this would do, this is a security filter. We have another video about security filters. Go there to learn about them. But in essence, what this is doing is it's going to filter the uh, user by a specific region. And you can view it here. It's just a regular filter on the region south. So no matter what report this user will run, he will always be filtered by a specific region in this case. So let's go back. Let's close this. Finally, the important step is you want to add your user to a user group. What this does is two things. First, it inherits whatever that group uh, security filter is enabled. Now, 
you're wondering, well, if you add a security filter here and the manager has a different security filter, what happens? It's going to do the intersection. So it'll always take the user security filter will dominate over the group. So in essence, even though if you add a group that you didn't want, that doesn't have a region filter, but the security filter does have a region filter, your user is still going to be grouped. So this way you maintain the data level security and you gave the right privileges and you added them to the right group, which um, has its own limitations or filters that you can add to it. You can also import data limit and you can say you inherit from project whatever the limit is or per user you can customize and add a specific megabytes okay authentication there's two levels of authentication that you could allow uh, beyond this just the regular access sometimes you might have metadata security in some very high secure systems you will add a metadata security you can link it to a windows user for single sign-on or you can do a regular uh, uh, database login and add the login here or an LDAP login or a trusted login just to add the ID so that the user is uh, verified and make sure user cannot use standard authentication if you're using this system the final thing is the warehouse sometimes there's certain warehouse uh, uh, accesses like if you have users that can write using transaction services you they can have a sub separate username password or this their username with a different password and you can do this with so you can have multiple uh, passwords for your data warehouse one with write access and one with read access only and uh, that way you can control who, who has access to write and who can only read from your data warehouse your deliverables deliveries you can give each user you can give them uh, an email address add it here that's for scheduling deliveries and they can add you can add more context to them either new context or add existing context obviously this can be done later on so you're not limited to doing it here but it's a very easy way to do it here uh, whenever the admin so the admin has control over this list and if you have multiple languages this is where you can change your languages for the user all right so this is the basic wizard now let's go and look at the group so once i create the wizard the group and i add him in a specific so let's look at a group so remember i said we can add them to a group what does that mean well let's look at the group what is the group allow it's a similar thing it's got a name it's got a project access and remember what I said, if you add a user to a group, they inherit whatever project access this group has, but it also can have its own project access. So there's that little subset of a superset, if you think about it like that. Also, a group can have its own security filters. And again, the user security filters supersedes this filter. And a group can be a member of, of another group. And this will show you the list of members of that group so you can add and remove them here rather than doing it on an individual basis and you can control for the whole thing and same here but notice the authentication is only for the metadata because the warehouse requires it to be done at the user level so you create the user you add them to a group the group inherits a bunch of things uh, a bunch of items that makes it common uh, common denominator or common property of all these users but each user can have his own and as I said you can come and enable and disable a group and you can uh, further control their uh, information one uh, one more thing we can do here if you noticed when you left or you right click instead of new user or user group you can also import from file you can import users if you have a lot of users that you need to import at, a, at once from a file you can do that right here or you can import windows a windows group or a windows user if you're using windows for authentication if you use the from file it's going to ask you to locate the file which is a simple file that you have created and uh, it's going to give you a either a random generating password which each user when they log in they will be asked to 
uh, change it or you can give them a specific password which will they will be asked to change it you can enforce privileges and project access at import time and you can import it from a file and it has to have this uh, order it has to be developer login full name account status and a description you can leave these two columns null and just enter the developer login the user id and the full name and if you're using an LDAP, you want to make sure that this is matching your LDAP uh, login. Okay, so that way you can import bulk users. Also, if you noticed, um, you can look at the LDAP connectivity wizard from here. Let's take a look at that if you're using LDAP. Now, usually you don't use the LDAP wizard frequently, but if you were trying to do a, a bulk or a first time set up you might want to use this and it's going to walk you through the LDAP uh, information that you need but once you set up the LDAP connectivity then each user can be or their LDAP user ID can be added and it will be going through this uh, connectivity so again you just create the connectivity wizard once and then each user when they when you use your LDAP connect, uh, property for login to the metadata it'll go through the LDAP server okay and that's pretty much it I mean there's more uh, detail for users and user groups there's also security filter which we talked about watch our other video about user I uh, mean about security filter that will give you a good idea in conjunction with these right here and obviously if you want to delete a user anytime uh, you can just go ahead and uh, delete you can also duplicate if you have a user that says hey I need the same access as so and so you can du duplicate and then after you duplicate you go and change you can also on the fly grant access to project and um, and uh, on grant or remove grants and you can enable and disable users uh, right here because this user is disabled it says enable if it was enabled it would say disable all right thank you very much and have a great day